LED organic light emitting diode is a new display technology which transfers energy from electricity into light by using different recipes of organic materials inside the diode. Different colors of light can be emitted. Nowadays, many electric devices use OLED cells constructing the display matrix to make their screen. So video lovers are rightfully enthused about OLED technology with its following advantages. Better contrast, no backlight requirements, and lower power consumption, faster refreshing rates, and possibility for flexible, foldable, ultra thin design. Now let's take a glimpse to the structure of OLED. First, a substrate which is usually made up of glass or metal. The substrate requires transparency for visible light, smooth and low surface roughness. Then comes the organic layer of emitting layer. This pink organic film is doped with fluorescent dolphin, holding electrons, recombining this layer and form a high energy exciton. Light emits as energy from the decay of this ex exciton. By adjusting the molecular design of emission layer, the wavelength of the light emission process can be controlled. Therefore, OLED is a possible to realize full color display with this characteristic. The anode and cathode should follow the design that allows electrons and holes to reach their suitable energy level for recombination, while the holes transport layer and electrons transport layer act like the medium for smoothing the carrier's transportation. Different types of OLED. So it has two, OLED has two main families. The first one is polymer. Advantage of polymer is eligible for printing and film forming technology. It doesn't need a uh, vacuum environment in, in, and it can be used for large scale display. The disadvantage will be the undeveloped technology and difficulty of using polymer materials. It is not the mainstream technology. But for small molecules, it is a developed technology and it is a mainstream of OLED. For conventional display devices, it uses small molecules. Uh, it has two main driving methods. The first one is passive matrix OLED. It, it is small scale and low resolution. That it is the foundation of active matrix OLED. So how does the passive matrix OLED works is at a specific time when, when providing a driving pulse to a specific horizontal line of electrodes. At the same time, all columns of electrodes are given driving pulses. Next, the driving pulse will move to the next horizontal line of and repeat the same process. One cycle of all rows of electrodes being scanned is one frame. When the frame e frequency is high enough, and due to human's tempor temporary visualization, the screen will provide a stable graphic display. Active matrix of OLED. It has challenge of trans uh, TFT substrate technology. For how does it work is for each element or pixels has the individual switch to control. Once selected pulses reaches T1, the data will be stored in the capacitor called CS. The voltage of the capacitor will control the current flow through the OLED. During the non-scanning period, the capacitor will maintain T2's working status, which is a switch to, until the next scanning period is coming. Uh, and it is, can be used for large scale and high resolution display. Flex OLED. The advantage of using flex OLED is pretty straightforward. It's been built on, on a soft substrate like plastic. The advantage is flexible and foldable. And the di disadvantage is the air tightness and the ad adhesive prop property. property. For white OLED, compared to the uh, general RGB OLED, it's been filtered by, out by the red, green, and blue colors and for different combination of these three colors to generate a colorful world. Uh, WOLED is a general lighting source. 
the only environment friendly lighting source. It can be used for backlight of LCD and highly improves the efficiency of our LCD performance. It can be used for large scale or LED display. But the challenge will be the luminance efficiency. Silicon substrate or LED. Besides basic driving, it can decode video either from analog to digital or digital to analog. It also has clock control, which integrated complicated analog and digital units to the substrate and realize the uh, uh, application without actual electric assistance. However, due to the size of silicon, limited the sub silicon substrate development. It can only be used for micro displayer. Well, I will present to you the basic structure anal analysis and light emission mechanism of OLED. This is the basic structure of OLED we have previously talked about. Note that it's a multi-layer structure and each layer is very thin, thus light can penetrate it. Here is the OLED device structure and band structure. We can see that OLED has a very similar band structure as classical semiconductor device devices. Well, LUMO means the highest occupied molecule orbital, and HOMO refers to, to the lowest unoccupied molecule orbital. From their definition, we can see that they are similar to the conduction band and valence band. In, in OLED, we use LUMO and HOMO to describe electron motions because the organic material is literally in insulator. So how does this device work? We, uh, we can apply voltage on the ITO anode and metal cathode, and magic things happen, it light up. And the voltage bars, holes and electrons will travel step by step to the emission layer, where they will recombine and form excitons. The exciton is the bond state of an electron hole pair, which are attracted to each other by the electrostatic static, static columbian force. It's not stable and has high energy. When it decay, it will release its energy in the form of light, and this light is what you can see here. As for the recombin recombination process, there are two different mechanisms, single light and triple light. According to Pauli's ex exclusion principle, a pair of electrons should have different spin states when they are in ground state. If the excited electron remains the same spin state during the excitation, it's the single light state, and the light emitted is called fluorine. Otherwise, if it has a different spin, it, it converts spin state during the excitation, we call it a triple light, and the light is called phos phosphorine. Well, single light has a higher energy, shorter wavelengths, so we so it's the it's the major part that we consider in our devices. And triple light, it, tri triple 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 light states usually emit infrared light, so special structures are applied and designed to avoid triple light emission. Now the question is, how much light can we emit? We can calculate the light by the following pr procedure. First, we can use the voltage applied to, cat, to get current and uh, calculate the current injection and, and get the current in the device. Then, we, uh, we use the external quantum efficiency to calculate how, man, how many photons are generated by the electrons. First, we use the Scottish Ceremonic emission to calculate how much in carriers are injected. Well, there are many different models to calculate the carrier injection. We use this Scotty one because it's universal. And here is the formula. Uh, the detailed formulas can be found in our manuscript. Here we only present the results. The, after the carriers are injected, we, we now need to calculate how much current and electrons are tra transported in the device. When charges flow into the organic field, the conduction system changes from ohmic to space charge limited current. It means that now the current is only dependent on the mobility and no longer on the charge density. Since in the, in the device there are a strong electric field, the drift current is much stronger than the diffusion current, so we can neglect the diffusion current 
and find the, the current transport transported is only related to the mobility here. After that, we need to calculate the external quantum efficiency. The external quantum efficiency is defined as follows. It's the, it's the, uh, it can be derived from the coupling efficiency, parallel balance, axiton generation efficiency, and the Lorentz quantum efficiency. Thank you.